Hi everybody! Hi Noga! Hello! So we're kicking off four psychoanalyzing Westworld videos in anticipation for season two. We're gonna take a look at the show from all kinds of psychoanalytical perspectives. Basically what we'll be looking at in the next few videos is how Westworld is popular because it resonates something in our psychic structure, right. certain aspects of our uh, unconscious. Right, right. Because Westworld is a show about many things, one of its major themes is human nature. The park itself is like the Wild West, right? It has it the same. Yeah, it is yeah. the Wild <laughs> West, basically. That's the sheriff's horse, you son of a bitch. It's rifle too. And uh, what they're really mimicking there is the kind of uh, uh, lack of lawfulness in the Wild West. I mean, right. you can just shoot anyone you want. Right. Uh, people can get on, raped, man. shot, what, burglared, right. whatever, at any time. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Uh, what it's mimicking is what Hobbes called the natural state. Thomas I, Hobbes, the English thinker. He tried to articulate why people need rules, why people need to come together and congregate congregate in some kind of like a collective right. agreement. Right, because there was a civil war in England at the time. And what was he trying to say? He was trying to say that basically in the natural state, like without any rules and without any mm. anything to, uh, to reinforce those uh, laws and uh, rules, then uh, people will be like a doggy dog, like we would do whatever we right. like. Right. That's a dangerous situation. Right, it's a killed, kill or be killed situation. I right. mean, there's no alternative. There's no way to keep yourself safe unless you kill other right. people. So you right. have to kill them in self-defense. Well, the park itself is not really like the Wild West because we have this kind of like a hierarchy uh, between uh, uh, the guests and the hosts. You could also say that it's like a human experiment. What will humans do when there are no consequences to their actions, so as we see with the guests in the park, mm -hmm. they rape, rape, they kill, they they steal stuff, whatever, they torture. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of, it has like a dark view of human nature. The question is, what is human nature? Are we bad to begin with or good to begin with? I mean, are we born bad or good? It's a question that uh, psychology or, and philosophy, philosophy and, uh, yeah, yeah. has been asking, and religion, yeah. religion of, course. of course. It's been asking itself since uh, basically the beginning of civilization. Right. Different theorists uh, differ on the, the answer to that. In, in psychoanalysis, for example, Freud was convinced that we're born bad. So he was very much reliant on the Darwinian uh, look on life and on evolution. Right. Survival of the fetus. Survival of the fetus, strong. and you, you're born with certain instincts of survival. Okay. So you have uh, uh, sexuality and aggression. Those uh -huh. are the basic instincts. Right. You kill other people and you spread your uh, whatever genes around. Exactly. For Freud, we're like animals. I mean, it's not that we're evil. It's just that this is how we are, you know. This is what, what we're supposed right. to do as part of our species, as part of uh, being mm. alive in this world. Society socializes us. There's a socialization right. process. Right. And uh, forms you. These are the limits of what you can do. Mm -hmm. You can do mm -hmm. anything you want. Yeah, you can do anything you want. You have to right. uh, to be to act a certain way. And what he says basically is that we're born with all these instincts and all these urges and all these needs, but most of them we can't fulfill in real life. Right. But in the park. In the park, you can because. You can. It's a sexuality and aggression. I mean, that's what you do in the park. I mean, right. that's the you kill people and you rape. I mean, or, or, or have sex like in sensual right. with the <laughs> hosts or whatever. So, so basically, the show is telling us: look at human nature. What happens if there are no consequences? Then mm -hmm. violence and sexuality will just run amok. People will just like they don't care about anything. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Hmm? Alive? Tight in the pants. Right. But Freud never says that the healthy thing is to just let these urges fly. Right. Uh, on the contrary, he thinks that uh, the healthy thing is accepting that reality, uh, we have to be aware of these instincts and what they're doing to our psyche, but uh, also to accept that reality doesn't allow it, and it doesn't right. allow it for a reason, and the reason is what Hobbes gives. Because if you do this to someone else, someone else might do it also back to you. So mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. in our own common interest right. to just let's say, okay, we're not going to do that. 
so so this is a very uh, dark view of human nature the park shows us but i think that the park uh, offers uh, unreasonable temptations to humans the temptation to be violent and to be sexual with robots there i'm not sure it really Uh, sheds any meaningful light on human nature because it's just unreasonable and unrealistic this temptation very it's very very extreme all our hosts are here for you myself included some claim that uh, our true nature comes out in extreme cases I mean that you can only truly judge uh-huh. a man right, in his right, anger right, right, right. and some people uh, say that yeah I personally don't think that way. I think that we all have self states and we have different ranges right. and that it's not that we have a false self and a true self and our true self comes out. Okay. It's we have many s- self states okay. and they're all part of us in the same kind of level. That's right. That. But that's actually just one paradigm in psychoanalysis. It's okay. like drive theory. It says that uh, we're okay. driven by those instincts. And okay. this is our main motivation in life and this is how I mean basically socializing with other people because we think that by socializing with them at one point we can either get sex or money and it's not really about their relationship it's more about withholding gratification until we can reach it from them like okay. we can get it but there's another paradigm regarding human nature okay and this paradigm uh, deals more with relationships and relationships between subjects we're driven by our needs to For relationships of course you no know, and sexuality is part of it and uh, aggression is also part of it right it's about what relationships do to us and how we are right. we function right in, in a relationship so it's more it's a more complex outlook a more layered outlook about human nature right. when I talk about relationships of course I don't only mean romantic relationships it's society as a whole and uh, friends and family and okay and, and how does it play play out in the show if you take this uh, relational uh, outlook well in the show you can see that uh, uh, the benefits that the guests have from uh, being in the park are uh, a lot more maybe than just having what we sex and killing. having sex and killing but it's more about also the The fact that they can deny their vulnerability I mean one of the hardest things in relationships mm-hmm. is being vulnerable in front of the other and what does it mean denying your vulnerability the guests can't be killed it was real real enough but you can't kill anyone you're not supposed to uh, they can be hurt so they can't be hurt I thought that you couldn't get hurt here only the rice amount of Well, they can be hurt but not uh, like really hurt like they can't mm. be killed they can only be hurt by the degree that they want to so they have control right. over that they have control oh. over their vulnerability Ooh, so you are in a world where you can control how much uh, you can be hurt yeah I mean that's most nice people, we all try to do that in our everyday life right with people we try to control situations in order not to be hurt we hate the fact that we're vulnerable in relationships so going into the park no vulnerability that's also, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Also, no guilt, no uh, shame, right? I can, uh, right. The, the hosts, whatever I tell them, even if I have like the weirdest uh, sexual fantasy, they won't uh, shame yeah, me yeah, for yeah, it, yeah. unless yeah. that's what I want. To, you know? <laughs> But uh, they will just do it and make me feel great about myself. Right. And even you see other guests, And they see what you're doing and you see what they're doing and there's no shame no, no shame. one's judging you exactly fine. go for it man go for it yeah exactly also there's no guilt I mean one of the things that we deal with as humans is also the guilt of hurting other people you right. know it's so difficult to know that you've hurt someone right and in the the park no guilt I mean no you guilt. don't really hurt anyone right know? they're just robots yeah that's, that's, like I have a few instances in my life that I that are very small and that I still carry with me uh, guilt for doing them. Of course, we all do. I mean, uh, it's part of being human. It's a good thing, guilt, to some degree, but it could also be very destructive and very painful. Right. Right, right, and we right. want to avoid that. So, so, we, the, so the park helps. The park helps. So there's a lot of gain, I mean, not just uh, the, okay. like, from drive uh, theory right. paradigm. Right. Is, it's, a, it's a more positive outlook uh, of human nature. It's more compassionate, I think. If society is telling you, You are dangerous you are more likely maybe to become dangerous I think there were some uh, re- the, there was some research done about that in football mm. stadiums where you put th- all, all the bars all the cages people became more violent than if you removed them and if you treat people like humans and for example I read this story a while back about a truck 
carrying pigs on the way to the slaughter. And the truck was, dri- was, was driving in the highway, and it had, it had an accident. Mm-hmm. And you saw pictures, they, they called 911, and people came out of the cars to help the pigs, and you could see beautiful pictures of people helping the pigs and caring for them, because of course you see animals that are in distress and hurt, so you feel compassion, so you want to help them, it's, it's, this is like your instinct. And, they, they, and then they put them back in the truck, and the truck drove them all the way to slaughter. The instinct was to care for the animals, but the socialization and the education is... Yeah. Pigs, who cares? The thing is that uh, even though Freud, uh, he based his theory on evolution, I mean, how animals act, we can see also all kinds of like uh, attachment and uh, relational behaviors in animals. Uh, there was uh, like a viral uh, video mm-hmm. of uh, a group of buffaloes rescuing a baby buffalo. One of the reasons it became viral was probably because people could really identify with the, how the, the baby buffalo was saved by the group. So if we are only aggression, wanted to kill, we would identify more with the lionesses right. than with the buffaloes. Mm-hmm. Some people say that uh, saying that people are uh, inherently driven towards relationships overlooks our true nature, like our animal nature. I mean, ah. animals, right, it, right, they have uh, many kinds of right, nature. Right, right, right. I mean, of course... And many self-states Many also. self-states, of course, and uh, I think that animals, you know, they don't just kill for killing. I no, mean, my, only we do that. Yeah, they don't so do that. Right. what is animal behavior? No, what uh, is our animal nature? You know, it's no. like... Uh, we should get in touch with our animal nature. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. better, it's better. Do it, do it, people. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's use all that mm-hmm. and turn that into a bold prediction for Westworld Season 2. I'm going to have a bold prediction in each of the four pre-season videos by Westworld, for Westworld. Okay, so the narrative, the basic narrative for the first season was the humans start out as subjects, we identify with them, and of course the robots are objects, whatever, like machines. And then slowly it changes, and by the end of the season we identify more with the robots, and they are the subjects, and the humans are just like horrible, whatever, and non, and you can't really empathize with them because they're just like doing horrible stuff. Jesus Christ! So what do you think would the second season tell us about human nature? I think that uh, the second season uh, will have uh, far more complexity when it comes to human nature. I think that uh, we'll see okay. that, uh, first of all, the division between groups, like you said, is also part of uh, the way we... Right. Of human nature. Uh, of human no. nature, no. Uh, yeah. I-, I think that we'll be able to see people crossing the lines. And, and helping robots it. also. And robots, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. There will be uh, the, the robots, uh, the hosts that will take right. care of the guests and right. uh, vice versa. Some will uh, collaborate. Some, uh, some will be traitors. Ta- some will be traitors, some will be taken captive, maybe there will be like a, another resistance of like both uh, guests and hosts together and stuff like that. Uh, yes. We'll have all kinds of uh, complexities. Right, but right now it will start, I think the season will start very violently from the host side mm-hmm. because it was, a, okay, it's a Hobbesian world, it was a Hobbesian world for the robots. Mm-hmm. Now the humans are inside, yeah. now they can get hurt. Mm-hmm. Basically, I don't know how much the robots can, the, the robots can be hurt because they can repair themselves. So this is a very, so it's like a flip. Yeah, now they're not the vulnerable. And the, right. the guests are vulnerable. So basically it's like a dialectical process. So like, mm-hmm. like the humans are not vulnerable. They control everything. But the very thing that they have created now have, has caused them to be uh, the victim. Mm-hmm. And now there'll be another dialectical process that everybody can be victimized or be oppressors. And let's, let's make peace. Mm-hmm. Let's love everybody. Everybody just love everybody. Yeah, why can't we all just get along? So in conclusion, we can look at the, the case of the man in black as some kind of like a test case. Okay, case study. Case study. I mean, Logan keeps telling him and also the slogans in the park, find out who you truly are. You can discover your true self or whatever. Okay. And then we can see that the man in black, he started off wearing a white hat. Logan was wearing the black hat. And then at the end, he throws away the white hat. He takes the black hat oh. and he becomes all black, right? That's like spoon feeding you. Yeah, that's like spoon feeding. Uh, our, yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it. He's evil. He's okay. Evil. If we look at this case through the two paradigms, then uh, if we look through the, the drive theory paradigm, like the Freudian okay. paradigm, 
then he really like uh, right. adopted uh, who he really are. Right. You so know? before when he was nice. Yeah, he was really like uh, right. uh, 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 repressing his right. instincts. Society was and telling, society was yeah, telling yeah, down, yeah. you have to be nice. Uh, you had right. like a false self. Right. But now, no, fuck it. Yeah, now, This no. is why he's staying there all the, the, the entire time. Right. Okay. Or... Or, or maybe through the relational paradigm, maybe there was some kind of like a, a more basic fault that we don't know of William. I mean, Logan kept telling him that he thinks that he's being uh, phony in a right. way. Right. So maybe there was something to begin with. Or maybe the temptation was too big because he, he just killed people because that's just what the park does. And then when you can just kill people and there's no consequences, maybe that just the fucks up with your brain. Maybe it's healthier. To look at yourself as this relational view, just like say, okay, I'm not all instincts and just like aggression, mm -hmm. I'm many things, mm -hmm. then it changes the way that you are in the world than if you just think, I'm always going to be aggressive, I always want to fight, more likely you're going to fight. It's telling us to dare to be human in the sense that uh, we need to embrace uh, our vulnerability, right. our guilt. I mean, that's from a, right. the our relationship. Our imperfectness. Exactly, our imperfections. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Sorry, we we'll cut that in editing. <laughs> <laughs> Editor. <laughs> and uh, just to dare being human, because being human is hard. And mm. uh, even though the park is tempting because it, hel it helps us uh, escape being human, we need to dare to be human, even uh, in the worst places. There's a Hebrew saying, in the place where there are no humans, be human. Right. Human in the good sense. In the good sense, in right. In the good sense. Okay, okay. Thank you, Noga. That was very interesting. Thank you for watching. I want to talk to you for 30 seconds about Patreon. We ha on, on the Patreon page for the channel, if you become a patron, you, are, you immediately have access to, I think, 25 or more, I think more by now, extra videos already in the archive. That's like almost 20 hours of videos of all kinds of stuff and new videos every month at least two new extra videos f uh, for patrons it's about politics and history and society and all kinds of stuff so if you're interested in that go to patreon.com slash got academy and subscribe to get all our westworld videos before the season and during the season i will see you all next time thanks Nova. bye, bye. bye.